Pam 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 Hey, hey everybody. I'm glad you could make it. Come on in. Gather round. We're going to uh, set fire to the Republic today. It's uh, time to go on offense. Uh, I'm not happy. I'm not happy with the way things are going. I'll tell you about that. But not until we have a little simultaneous sip. And what do you need to do that? Well, not much. Not much, really. All you need is a cup or a mug or a glass of tanker, chalice or stein, a canteen jug or flask, a vessel of any kind. Fill it with your favorite liquid. I like coffee. And join me now for the unparalleled pleasure, the dopamine tip of the day, the thing that makes everything better, the simultaneous sip. Go. Mmm. Tastes better than Trump pills. You know what Trump pills are, right? The uh, Trump pills are uh, the name I'm giving the combination of pills that are the uh, hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin and zinc. Because I really hate writing those down, and I, <clears throat> I hate pronouncing them. So from this day forward, hashtag Trump pills. Uh, let's hope they work, <laughs> for his sake. All right, let, we're going to talk about some fun things and then some serious things. Um, this podcast, which so this Periscope gets turned into a YouTube for replay, you can see it on Periscope and Replay, but also gets uh, turned into just an audio only. And this week we hit number 77 on iTunes. So of all the podcasts in the world, of which i got to think there are quite a few, uh, we've, we've cracked the top 100, and it's number 77. That's good. Um, the New York Times has an article today that just got lost <laughs> because you know nobody cares about anything except the coronavirus. But there's this researcher who figured out how to reverse aging. <laughs> so while you are watching the crisis, you know, there, there's somebody over in a lab somewhere else who's like, oh, I just cured old age. Now, is it real? Well, we've heard this a few times, maybe not. But at least at the cell, cell, cellular level, they've figured out how to reverse the age of a, a cell. Now, it's, it might take them a while to see if they can you know, ramp that up into some kind of medicine that humans can use. I don't know if they'll get there or not. But it's just fun that in the middle of this crisis, the most dramatically, at least potentially, positive thing in the, in the history of human civilization just happened, and, and nobody freaking cares. <laughs> we don't care about it right now. Well, maybe it's good. Maybe it's good news. I don't know. So I said last night, and I'll say it again in case anybody missed my Periscope last night, the president putting the Easter date on this is just brilliant. It's, it's good managing. It's good leadership. I, I said it before it happened that we need at least their best guess. It can change. It can change. You know, If we need to make it shorter or longer, it can change. But it's really important to have a, an estimate out there, and now we have it. And I love the fact that the president picked Easter because it associates you know, the resurrection with our, our economy beginning its resurrection. It's just sort of perfect. So I'm, I'm going to give some harsh grades today to the, uh, to the administration. But I want to start with the good news, so, so I'm not just all angry all day. The good news is I think setting the date is brilliant. I think closing the China travel early was brilliant. I think closing the uh, European travel, strong move. I think the team is very strong. I like, the, I like the, the updates every day. Those are great. And there's a ton of stuff happening. All right. So there's a whole bunch of stuff, if you're being fair, you know, if you can remove yourself from the politics a little bit, there's a whole bunch of stuff that the administration is really doing well. Um, but there are things that aren't, and we'll talk about those and what to do about it. But first I'd like to point out, and this will dovetail into the, the meat of the conversation, I've been saying for a while that the, the republic has evolved. No longer do we elect smart people 
have them ride their horse off to Washington and make some votes for us. Maybe we find out someday what they did. That was the original system. It was fine in a world with no social media and people weren't that connected uh, communication-wise. But now we are. And I've argued that the, the republic has already evolved so that social media is effectively running the country for anything that social media cares enough about. You know, there's 99% of government we don't really care about. It's, you know, collecting the garbage sort of stuff. But for the 1% that we get excited about and the, and the public can understand at some level, the public is, is driving the car. If you want to see a good example of that, you just saw one of the best ones you'll ever see, which is when Pelosi and Schumer parachuted into town to kill the relief deal by adding a bunch of pork to it. That's business as usual, usually. Usually, you know, the the whole concept of making laws is if you have a funding bill, everybody throws their pork on there, and it's actually part of the process. Because if you can't get the senator from this state to vote for it, maybe you can't get anything passed, and the only way you can bribe that senator is to you know, fund a military, uh, military uh, base in his district or something like that. So the pork has a, a functional purpose, and mostly the public just says, ah, I hate it, but i got other things to think about. Just you know, make something happen. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, I know there's pork, and it's sort of useful, but it's not. I'll just let that go. But in the middle of a national emergency, our totally out-of-touch leaders, Pelosi and Schumer, and really, they are so disconnected from the zeitgeist, uh, they, they failed to read the room in a way that's just astounding. Because right in front of us, they flew into town, and they just... They just broke the system to throw some pork in there. So what happened? Well, of course, the Republicans complained, but they weren't complaining to the Democrats. They complained to their bosses. The Republicans took it up to their bosses. No, not the president. The president is not the boss of Congress. You are. You are the bosses of Congress. And what happened when the Republicans kicked it up to their bosses. Well, we weren't happy, were we? Because in this case, the pork is not okay. It's not okay with the Democrats. It's not okay with the Republicans. And, and let, me, let me propose a, um, a rule for you, something to watch. If you see Mark Cuban using gross profanity on social media telling, telling the government to get his act together, as he did, and you see me using gross profanity in exactly the same mission, it's probably going to happen. In other words, if you can piss off Mark Cuban and me at the same time, you're probably pissing off everybody, right? You're probably pissing off everybody. And if we get that mad so that we're going to just take the filter off and say... As we did, I don't want to repeat the words, but um, as Mark Cuban put it in in the cleanest, most leadership way, and by the way, he's a superstar in this, this, he's doing great. He said this, do your effing job. And I don't need any details. That's the beginning of the conversation, and that's the end of the conversation. I don't want to hear because... I don't want to hear you can't do it. I don't want to hear about the process. I don't hear why it's a good idea to do it your way. Nope. Just do your effing job. And you saw that it looks like they took the pork out of there and they're getting it done. Now, this is the cleanest example you've seen of the republic is not, is not the elected people in charge. They're only in charge when you and I don't care and we're not watching. But when we care... And we understand the topic. Yeah, this was easy. Pork, no pork. And we're engaged. Your elected, your elected people are not in charge, not even close. You, the public, made them change their mind right in front of you. And there's no question about what happened. The Democrats did not cave to the Republicans. They caved to you. 
you the public. You're in charge. This is important for what I'm going to talk about in a moment. Uh, So here's what Pelosi said. This is an actual quote from her talking about, you know, the the pork that she tried to put into the bill. I think this was yesterday. And she said this, quote, There is a whole concern in our country. What? What is a whole concern? Are there such things as partial concerns? The first part of her sentence is literally babble. It's actually nonsense, and it doesn't get better. So here it is. There's a whole concern in our country, what the fuck does that mean? Sorry. That if you're giving tens of billions of dollars to the airlines, okay, that's just a fact, that we could at least have a shared value about what happens to the environment. What? That sentence doesn't make any sense, Nancy. You're not reading the room. You're not serving the public. And I'm sorry, you're not even making sense. You can't be our leader. So from here until... The crisis has passed. She's, she's not in charge. You are. Do you want that in charge? Do you, do you want decisions about your life and death made by somebody who's 100 years old and can't put a fucking sentence together in public? No. You don't want Joe fucking Biden, and you don't want fucking decomposing Nancy Pelosi who can't put a fucking sentence together. They're not in charge. And we're done with them. We're done with them. Because you, the people, you can tell them what to do now. All right? So do it. It worked the first time. They, it looks like some kind of stimulus bill is going to come. But it wasn't because they did the job. No, it was because you did the job. You did the job. They didn't do the job. So that's number one complaint. I got more. Number two. I've been saying for several days, can the government give us some visibility on their supply, supply uh, pipeline for these critical medical supplies? At least tell us how many you need, tell us how many you have, and then give us some visibility. It doesn't have to be perfectly accurate, but some sense of the pipeline. You have noticed that that has not happened. Although I did hear one estimate that New York City thinks they need 20,000 ventilators and they got 4,000. But that still doesn't tell you the story, right? doesn't tell you the story because how many are in the pipeline? How many can they get, right? You're flying blind. Who is in charge? You are. You're in charge, right? You're watching it yourself. You're in charge. And what information do you have to make a decision about ventilators? None. None. It's been several days, and your government can't tell you how many we need, how many we have, and what's in the pipeline. Failure. Fucking failure. That's simple shit. All right? That's simple shit. Tell us the basics. If you can't do that, failure. All right? How how are we supposed to know what to do? How are we supposed to mobilize? How am I supposed to know? Should I find a way to help making ventilators or should I find a way to help making masks? Because I could probably help. I don't know. Because I don't know what we have. I don't know what's missing. So why do we have this situation? Well, let me tell you. So we got this War Powers Act. If we had done it the standard way, the government would say, you factory are making masks. I don't care if you don't like it. It's a War Powers Act. You're making ventilators. You're making this. If we had done it that way, that's the old traditional way, our government would know what we have, what we're making, what we need, you know, what's in the pipeline. If the government controlled it and just said, you factory, you factory, you factory, how many can you make? All right, you can make 5,000. I'll add that to my list. But instead, the president has taken another approach, it has, it has some benefits. So I'm not going to say this is a mistake. I'm going to tell you what problems it caused, which is different from saying it was the wrong path. So he's gone with, apparently there was so much uh, voluntary cooperation from um, voluntary cooperation from um, companies, which is great. So that's the good news. Apple, 3M, basically every company that could stood, you know, um, stood up and offered something. So that's all good news, right? Great news. All these companies stepping up to do something, except 
Because of that, we have no visibility. I don't believe there's anybody in the government who has visibility of all the companies who have stepped up and what they're doing and what should be done. So because we're doing it this way, instead of the government saying, you, factory, make 20000 you, factory, make 30000 in which case the government would know exactly what's in the pipeline, I don't think they know, and I think we have a system in which they can't know because it's people acting independently and just trying to figure it out. Here's what I recommend for a solution. Uh, since we've already gone this path, we're not, we're not going to reverse it now, but that's the path we're on. So here's how to fix it. There have been a number of apps and websites built by people, spontaneous, you know, just people saying, I think there's a need to connect doctors to other doctors. Somebody, somebody built that Slack channel. Somebody else said, I think there's a need to connect uh, the people who are making stuff with the people who are buying stuff. And somebody built that. That's already in existence. But here's my problem. We may have more than one of those. In other words, we may have duplicated effort, but now I need my leadership, I need my president to, at the next task force to say these are the ones we're going to endorse. Because there are probably a number of websites that are trying to do the same thing. Oh, you know, just patriots jumping in. But it's confused the field. At this point, somebody in the administration has to say, here are the five apps and websites that everybody should use. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the people who used the other ones, built them, jumped in, tried to help. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But we've got to get everything on the same platform. Otherwise, we're flying blind. So we've got to know what's in the pipeline, and we've got to get it all on the same app, and uh, your, your leadership has not asked for that, as far as I know. That's an F. Sorry. I'm grading tough today. That's an F for visibility to the public. Because the public is going to have to have a big role in running this, this war, and if we're flying blind, we can't help. All right. Um, here's my big problem with what we're doing as a strategy. And you're not going to like to hear this, but I'm, I'm just going to be as honest as I can today. Um, our strategy to fight this virus looks a lot like the Obama strategy for Afghanistan. The, Af- the Obama um, strategy for Afghanistan was apparently that if somebody in the field, on the battlefield, said, hey, it looks like we found somebody to target, they would have to run it all the way up to the chain, and I don't know if Obama had to say yes or somebody at the top. And by the time the word came back, the situation had changed. So it was impossible to fight the war the way the people on the ground knew it should be fought because they weren't in charge. It was all centralized. That appears to be the same bad fucking strategy that we're using against the virus. And here's what I mean. Right now, the guidelines are that if you have some symptoms, you, you can get a test. If you don't have symptoms, you can't get a test. But if you have symptoms, you can get a test. Can you get the meds? Well, you can get the meds if the test comes back and says that you've got the coronavirus. How long does that take? Five days-ish. Because the tests are all centralized, and the whole process of you know, who gets a pill and under what condition is centralized. So the FDA has these guidelines about, no, you, you've got you've to actually um, you know, show in a test that takes five days you got to show that you've got symptoms or that you really have the coronavirus, and then your doctor maybe can give you some off-label meds. All right? So that's our situation. That's the Afghanistan strategy. So while you're waiting for your fucking test for five days, you could die. Is that hypothetical? No, no, that's not hypothetical. People are fucking dying because we've got an Afghanistan strategy, meaning that you and the doctor can't make a battlefield decision. Right? That's the guidelines. You and your doctor can't make a battlefield decision. You've got to run it up to the FDA. What's the FDA say? Well, you've got to get a test. Can I get a test? I don't know. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. They've got to go through the state labs, these all state official labs. Are they, are they geared up to be able to do the volume? No. Can they gear up to do the volume? Probably not. You have a completely failed strategy in place. 
It's the Afghanistan strategy. We know it doesn't work. You've got to bring down the control to the doctor and the patient. And I'm going to tell you how to get those meds from your doctor. So I'm going to save the lives of everybody who's watching this in the sense that your risk from the coronavirus is going to go from a little bit too big to something closer to zero. I'm going to tell you how to get the the meds from your doctor. I'm going to break the government, all right, at least for you. So you're going to be freed of these government restrictions in a while in a way that will work, absolutely. Okay, I'll get to that in a moment. So we've got a testing process in which we can't do these home testing. So, so you're not allowed to do, have a test kit at home, swab yourself and mail it in or drop it off someplace which would be completely safe. You actually have to go to a facility that's steaming in coronavirus and infect your doctor, oh, maybe, the worst, and then wait five days while you may or may not suddenly turn bad and fucking die while you're waiting for your goddamn fucking incompetent government to run the Afghanistan war strategy on a goddamn virus. It's the wrong strategy. I'm going to break it right now. Okay, so the strategy doesn't apply to you anymore. And I'll I'll tell you why, but, but you're free of it. And here's why. Everybody who is in the know knows that the meds work. I'll call them the Trump pills, because I think it's funny. It's easier to pronounce. You know, the uh, hydroxychloroquine, the uh, azithromycin, and the zinc. I'm here to tell you I have more information than you have about most things. In other words, I'm, I'm pretty tapped in to the collective brain of the world at this point, largely because of this process. And I can tell you that um, pretty much all the doctors are prescribing it to themselves. Pretty much all the doctors are making sure they have enough for their family. I bet you you're not going to see one fucking famous person die from this disease unless they have underlying conditions. Why? Because every famous person gets this drug as soon as they go in with symptoms. Do you? No. No, you don't. You go in with symptoms and they say, well, you have to take a test. Where's the test? We don't have it but maybe I can get one, and then I'll test you. Sometimes the test works, and sometimes they don't, but it's going to take five days, and you might drown in your own fucking lung juice while you're waiting. Does a celebrity do that? No. Does a billionaire wait for the test? Not one fucking time. Every billionaire already has this drug. I thought, I was kind of playing it cool for a while, because I thought, oh, there must be some kind of shortage of the drug. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, but Scott, 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 it's not proven. Let me, let, me, let me tell you the cost-benefit here. These drugs are widely available. You could probably get them at Walmart. I don't recommend getting them if you don't have symptoms because that, that breaks the whole country, right, if you hoard them. It'll be hard to get them without symptoms, but probably if you try really hard, you could do it. I just don't recommend it. But the moment you get symptoms, I'm going to tell you how to get it before you get the test, all right? It's it's not allowed, it's not recommended, but I'll tell you how to do it. So stay tuned. Um, So here's the trade-off. We know that this is a well-tolerated drug. We know that if you're taking a short term, probably the worst case scenario is you get a little diarrhea and maybe a little nausea. No big deal compared to drowning in your own lung juice, right? Which is the other potential possibility. Um, we know that everywhere around the world it's being used, they're pretty happy about it. For $20 and the risk of a little bit of diarrhea, are you going to take five days of risk of dying from the coronavirus plus giving it to everybody you touch? Um, No, you're not. So let me tell you how to convince your doctor to skip the test and give you the meds. All right, I'm getting lit up, lit up by some messages from somebody who knows I'm on Periscope. Uh, okay. Um, somebody says, where's your proof? None. If you're asking for proof, you're a fucking idiot. Let me give you the, let me give you the, um, the trade-off. The trade-off is it costs about $20 for a widely available drug. It's worst-case scenario because we've been using it for years, 
is that if you took it for a long time, there might be some issues. For a short time, a couple weeks or whatever the regimen is, basically no side effects. And if all your doctors are using it and all the tests are showing that it works, oh, wait, you say. Did you see that? Did you see the study um, that, that followed some people and said it didn't work? You probably saw that in the news, right? Bloomberg reported it. Bloomberg. Do you know where the study came from? China. There was a Chinese university, the only one who says it doesn't work. Huh. In the middle of fucking China using a massive disinformation campaign to lie about every goddamn part of this virus situation. They lied about how much, how big a problem was and that they had it. They are lying now about their statistics. They're lying about the United States being maybe responsible for it. And I guarantee you that that study that came out of a Chinese university was disinformation. Can I prove it? No. But are you going to believe anything China tells you about the virus today? No. Look at every other source, and they all point in the same direction. Every one. Only one points in the other direction. China. A very small Chinese university, which of course is owned by the government. So, don't hoard this drug, but here's how you get it. Let me, uh, <laughs> let me tell you the persuasion technique. You go into your doctor and you've, you've clearly got the symptoms. You know, you, you know what the symptoms are. You've clearly got them. Your doctor says, yes, I agree. It might not be coronavirus, but you do have the symptoms. Here's how you convince your doctor to give you the drugs. The first thing you need to know is that you need to go in there well-informed. If your doctor even sniffs that you know less about this situation than the doctor, you might not get them. So job one is to know more than the doctor, or at least as much, just about this very narrow drug application. And that's not hard. So I'll tell you what to know to prove to your doctor that you understand enough to get it off-label, because they can give it to you legally off-label without a test. So they don't go to jail if they give you the drug. It's legal. But the guidelines say you wait for the test. Don't wait for the, don't wait for the test. That is your doctor. That, the waiting for the test is the Afghanistan-Obama strategy to let some centralized thing slow down the process that you know needs to be fast. All right? Here are the things you want to tell your doctor. Number one, every doctor either is taking it, planning to take it, or has already stockpiled it. Look at your doctor in the fucking eyes and say, tell me you won't take this for yourself if you get the symptoms. Look me in the eye and tell me that you're going to wait five days for a test if your spouse starts a dry cough. You fucking liar. Because if you tell me that you wouldn't give your spouse that on day one, you're just lying. All right, now, don't call you, your doctor a fucking liar yet. But they are a fucking liar if they say no. No, I'd wait for the test. Because that's what the FDA said. No. No doctor anywhere in the world will wait for the test if their own spouse has a dry cough in the middle of the coronavirus crisis. And don't believe anybody who says otherwise. Secondly, other countries are are massively taking it. We know this to be true. It's not a coincidence. Um, The other thing is that you should know the the cost. The cost of the regimen for getting the drugs, it's about a $20 cost for the entire cycle that you would be on it. $20. I mean, give or take. You know, the prices are all over the place. What does the cost of a test $1,000, $1,000, right? Do you, do you think you should take a $20 test that you can take immediately and take the odds of you worsening down to pretty low, according to anecdotally everything that's happening? Or do you want to take a $1,000 test and wait five days and you might be dead before the test comes in? There's no question, which is smart. So make sure your doctor knows that the pills cost $20 and that the test costs 1000 And then here's the kill shot. And here's the kill shot. Don't leave this one out. Because, you know, so the, so the high ground maneuver 
is to show that you understand you know, the costs and the risks as much as the doctor does. And here's the next part. The disease progresses quickly. That's, that's the end of your persuasion. The disease progresses quickly. There are plenty of anecdotes, and your doctor will be familiar with them, of somebody who wasn't that bad, and suddenly, you know, it's time for the ventilator. So your doctor knows that. If you show that you know it too, then you have said, I have potentially a deadly disease. It could kill me before the test comes in. It is legal for you to give it off-label. I will go literally fucking insane if I'm worrying about this for five days. Because remember, doctor, you're not just treating my body, you're treating my mind. And if I don't get this drug, and I have to wait five days, I'm going to fucking flip out. And here's the next part. Doctor, and by the way, this next thing I have used, and I know this works. Doctor, here's the deal. I am going to get that drug. If you prescribe it to me, that's the preferred situation because you're my doctor and you can, you can monitor my, my whole situation. But if you don't give it to me, I'm going to walk out of here and I'm going to get it. I'll get it on the black market, which can be done. I'm going to shop for a doctor to give it to me who won't know as much about me. But here's the thing, doctor, that I need you to understand. By the end of today, I'm going to be on that drug. I would prefer it be you. Because I know you can, I know it's legal, and I know you're allowed to use your judgment when to use it and when to not. You, clue, you, you know that I know, understand the field, you know that I've looked at the costs and the benefits, and you know that although we don't have the long-term tests, that it's such a low risk, it would be absolutely insane not to give it to me. How many of your doctors are going to give it to you? Well, either everyone or find another doctor. So your ability to find a doctor that will give you this with that, you know, with that preamble, you have to use the persuasion. So you might want to you know, bookmark this and play it back and write it down because you want to hit all the points. You need to know all the costs. You need to know the risks. You need to know that it's a fast-moving disease. You need to know that the labs are going to take five days and that the risk-reward is simple. And very importantly, you have to know that the doctors themselves are prescribing it to themselves because that that's that's sort of the end of the conversation if you can get your doctor to say yeah i'd give it to my spouse under this situation because they would they would i looked at the uh, language for the right to try now the right to try act does not cover this situation the right to try was a uh, 2018 law that said that if you've tried all other um allowed uh, treatments and they didn't work, uh, and you're willing to at least, uh, and, oh, and you're not able to go into a clinical trial. So if you can go into a clinical trial, you sort of have to, but then you might get the placebo, right? So that's the risk. But this right to try says that if you, if for some reason you can't be in the trial and you've tried everything else, under those conditions, you could try an experimental drug that has not gone through phase one trials. Now, does this apply to the Trump pills? And the answer is no, it does not. But, and the reasons it doesn't is because um, it it just doesn't quite fit the description of what's happening here. And I'm pretty sure that the lawyers would agree that this isn't quite meant for this situation, doesn't quite cover it. But in, in attitude, it does. In, um, in the, let's say, the, the spirit of the law, it absolutely does. Right? The spirit of the law is that if you think you're, you've got a deadly, you know, something that could kill you, you get to be a little more flexible. At least if you're using common sense about you know, what you know and what you don't know and what the risks are. Well, this is exactly that. So it doesn't fit the right to try, but it is the right to try. I mean, it is the right to try. It, you, know, you as a citizen have the right to try. Now, if you're paying attention, you'll see that what I have done is I've taken power from the government. So your government is telling you to pursue the Afghanistan strategy, wait five days for your test. Oh, don't do the test at home. That's got to be centralized. 
and uh, don't get the drug when it would be a smart idea in terms of risk-reward. No, I've got to wait for the test. Obama-Afghanistan strategy. Don't, don't do it. Take control. All right. So all of you who have heard my experience um, now are largely safe from the coronavirus because uh, everything that we've heard, and by the way, you should keep your social isolation like crazy. It doesn't mean you should take risks. That would, that would be stupid. Speaking of stupid, um, Dan Patrick, uh, what is he, lieutenant governor or something of, uh, of Texas, I said this before, but I'm going to pile on because Britt Hume considered that Dan Patrick had an entirely reasonable viewpoint. There's a lot of pushback on social media to that. So I want to weigh in. So Dan Patrick's point of view was that people over 70 would be willing to take the risk of sort of normalizing the economy because even though they're the ones most likely to die, they also want to leave a functioning economy for their grandchildren and children. And so Dan Patrick was saying quite bravely that he would take that risk because it's for the greater good. Here's my problem with that. It's not for the greater good. It's not. If it were for the greater good, I would say, well, that's pretty noble. You know, I, I would have like a ton of respect for somebody who said, you know, I'm in the danger zone and even I'm going to take a chance because I don't want it to hurt the rest of you. But that's not what's happening. If, if uh, the 70 year olds leave the house and go back to work, some number of them are going to fill our hospitals. And that's my problem. That's my problem. So, Dan Patrick, you're not taking a risk on yourself, which would be fine. You know, taking a personal risk for the greater good, well, that's, that's sort of the ultimate, uh, the, the ultimate hero move, right? So that would be great. But he's not doing that. He's taking a risk for us so he can get out of the house. Now, I realize it's good for the grandchildren as well. But, Dan Patrick, I want you to stay home. If you're asking me what I want, you know, what's good for me, what's good for you know, my grandkids, I want you to stay the fuck home. Stay the fuck home. Don't, don't become a casualty and fill up my ICU. I might need that if I get a heart attack. So stay the fuck home. And Britt Hume, who is, uh, I have to say, one of the most consistently reasonable voices on social media. I mean, really, you know, whenever, whenever I see a Britt Hume tweet, I, I always read that thing. If, if he tweets an article, I always read it. He, he's just one of the better... Uh, you, you know, he sees the whole field. I mean, he's just, just one of the best people um, talking about anything on TV. But I don't think it's a reasonable viewpoint. It's, it's reasonable for him to take a risk for himself, but not on our behalf. Um, so, here's what we need. Um, I think the public is going to need the, to lead the argument about reopening, and I think it's already happening. If you ask me... The, the president picking a date and, and getting a little more aggressive about opening is a response to the public. I don't think that's just because smart people in the government said, oh, some of us think you ought to open, some of us don't, we're trying to work it out. I don't think it's that. I think the public is, is driving that date. You know, the, the government has to give us a date, but I think the public is driving give us a date. Everything's better when you have a date. Because once you've removed some uncertainty, you know, there's always some, but you've removed a lot of uncertainty. Is this a six-month thing or a two-month thing? You know, it's closer to two than six. That's removing a lot of uncertainty. So that should be a, you know, a big boost. Let's see what the stock market's doing today. Uh, stock market. Look in. It's a little mixed. We got some ups, we got some downs. I would, I would expect that. Yeah, it should, it should look mixed today. That would be expected because yesterday was a big up day. Um, all right, so let's uh, go break the system. Here, here's the thing. If enough of you demand the drug without the test, that's the law. You get that, right? If enough of you go to your doctors and are perfectly reasonable. And by the way, you're not cheating. 
You're just being smart. You and your doctor can have, a, can have an honest conversation about risk and reward. You're allowed to do that. You're not breaking any laws. So go do it. Go break the system. Break the system. By the, a day from now, I want to hear that anybody with symptoms is getting that uh, drug. I don't want to hear that people are unwisely waiting five days. Just bully your doctor, push him. Uh, I know there's, I know there's at least one person watching right now who doesn't want to hear the, doesn't want to hear the sentence "bully your doctor," but let me be, be as clear as I can: <clears throat> bully your doctor for your own good. Now, and if your doctor can't be bullied, and don't be a jerk about it, you don't need to be. You just need to lay out the case, and it should be fine. You don't have to be, you don't have to actually be a bully or actually be a joke, a jerk. But get what you want. Or go somewhere else and get it. But get what you want. You don't have to worry about not getting it. All right. Um, let's see. Um, I, I saw... So here's some CNN fake news. So CNN had a headline that says, a Physician on Trump's Request, colon, It's Really Impossible. So if you saw this headline... Physician on Trump's request. Now, the topic was uh, Trump was mentioning that maybe some of the N95 masks, not all of them, but some of them could be sterilized and reused. So that's, that's Trump's request. So CNN headline, Physician on Trump's request. It's really impossible. So you play the video, and you expect to hear a physician say that it's impossible to sterilize any N95 masks. And so you play it, and it's not there. It's actually not fucking there. There's nothing in the interview in which this doctor said, of Trump's request, it's really impossible. Didn't use those words. Didn't use words to that effect. Basically, just changed the subject. Because it's just a doctor. She's not some... Uh, this random physician that, you know, who has some expertise about the disease, probably does not have expertise on designing and testing and sanitizing N95 masks, and to her credit, did not offer an opinion because she's a doctor and she's not an expert on sanitizing N95 masks of some type. I'm pretty sure nobody is because nobody's really had to worry about it before. So this is just grotesquely fake news. It, the, the headline doesn't have any, any uh, correlation with the actual story. It's, it's, it's crazy. So Prince Charles apparently got the coronavirus, seems to be feeling good. Um, what are the odds that he has already received the Trump pills? They, could call them, they might call it something different in England. What are the odds in the comments? Prince Charles has coronavirus. What are the odds he's not already taking the $20 regimen of Trump pills. Fucking zero. Fucking zero. Those are exactly the odds. Not 1% that he's not taking them. Not 2%. He's fucking taking them. So, get, so if, you, if you get you know, those symptoms, go get your pills. All right. Um, that's about all I have to... I don't know if masks can be sterilized, by the way. I'm just saying that the CNN headline was fake. Um, I think I've said what I want to say. <clears throat> Traffic seems to be pretty heavy right now. So, I'll say it again. In an emergency, you know, leaders emerge. You've got, you've got your president, you've got your head of your FDA, you've got you know, head of the CDC... A lot of leaders emerge in a crisis. But that does not absolve you of your responsibility to also be a leader. You also get to be a leader. All right? Now, you can lead in your household, you can lead on social media, you can lead in, in any number of ways. But you don't get to not be one. All right? This is not a spectator sport. So, lead. It's time for the people to take the decision away from the government. The government has given you an Afghanistan strategy for testing, you know, centralized, make you wait, die while you're waiting. 
don't do the smart cost-benefit thing and take the meds right away. If that's your government strategy, then the government has lost its leadership. Okay? It, doesn't, it, it doesn't have the moral authority to lead you anymore. because that's. And by the way, I would also accept a good argument from the government that says, I'm not telling you the right stuff to do. I would accept a good argument. Yeah, Nevada has uh, put a limit on the, the drug, but I think that has to do with shortage, and it has to do with the fact that those drugs are used for other important diseases, and those people don't want to be left without it. So the, the Nevada decision should be seen as proving it's useful. Because if Nevada thought that this was not a useful drug, I don't think they'd act this aggressively. I think they'd just sort of try to talk you at them and say, no, don't, you know, that's not tested. But uh, when you see the lengths that they're going to secure their um, supply, don't, you know, you should interpret that. All right, so that's the dog that isn't barking. The dog that isn't barking is that the drug works. And if you're not getting it soon, you're in the Afghanistan Obama strategy, and it's not going to work. All right, that's all for now. Go break the system. It needs to be broken uh, in just those, those few ways. Let's see if we can change that by the end of the week. And by the way, the, the, the studies that are happening in New York City, because I think it was Monday they started giving people these Trump pills to test them. It's Thursday, right? Today's Thursday. From Monday to Thursday, you would already know if they worked. Uh, anecdotally, they do work that fast. Anecdotally, you already know in 24 hours if the patient is recovering or getting worse. By the third day, you pretty much know. And I'm telling you that anybody who got the drug on Monday, they might be close to symptom-free by now. So if we wait one more day, that's a failure of leadership. All right? If we wait one more day where you have to wait for tests before you get the drug, that's just a failure of leadership. But it doesn't mean you have to fail, because you can be a leader too. So go make it happen. Go break the system if it doesn't break itself. Talk to you later.